Hey there, creative friend. Today we're going to craft this gorgeous welcome sign that's perfect for framing and hanging at your home's entrance. It'll bring a touch of radiance to your living space and bring a smile to anyone who steps inside. Best part? This DIY is super simple. So get ready to dive in and enjoy the process to the fullest. Let's get started. For this project, I'll be using one of the ready-to-paint designs from our Home Signs art pad, along with their palette testing page. But you can totally go for the template of this design, which you'll find in the description box. In the upcoming weeks, we'll be painting the rest of the designs, so make sure to subscribe to the channel so you won't miss any videos. So. The materials we're going to need for this project are the Home Signs watercolor art pad from Iperartica or watercolor paper of at least 240 grams, good quality, and the Iperartica template. You'll also need a palette for mixing colors. If you don't have a palette, a ceramic plate works too. Watercolors, watercolor brushes, I used a round size 8 with a good tip for most of the work and a 3 slash 0 for fine touches. A water container, a cloth or kitchen paper to dry the brush, graphite pencil, colored pencils, and of course a nice cup of tea or your favorite infusion to enjoy while you paint. If you're using the template, the first thing we'll do is trace the template at the center of our watercolor paper. Now, we just lightly trace a template onto the watercolor paper using a hard pencil. No need to press too hard. Since I've got my art pad handy, I'm going to make things easy and paint right on it. I just gently peel off a sheet from the pad and my design's good to go. To keep things smooth and stop the paper from getting all wavy with lots of water, I'm going to stick the paper onto a piece of plywood. Time to set up a simple color palette. In watercolor, the stuff you use really makes a difference, so try to steer clear of cheap watercolors and low-grade paper. Remember, a color palette with fewer colors will always result in a more harmonious look. So, to make the colors less vibrant, I just mix in a touch of brown. Alright, next up. I'm going to whip up a watered down version of these same colors. This is for the wet on wet technique, where you use a super watery color, and while it's still wet, add more paint that's wet too. It's like magic. They blend together and create these cool texture effects. Once our palette's ready to roll, let's give it a whirl on our test paper and see if we're digging the shades we've cooked up. Oh, and just like I did with the other colors, I repeat the same trick with magenta and violet. Getting those different watery levels ready for some wet on wet action. Before I dive into painting, I like to rough out a quick color sketch. Helps me figure out which colors go where so the whole thing looks nice and balanced. I just grab colored pencils in similar colors from my watercolor palette and scribble down what hue goes on what. It's not just about balance though. It's also about what you want to pop in the final piece. For me, I want the word welcome to be the star of the show so I'll paint it with a soft light color to make it stand out. This step's got to be snappy, like you're speed drawing almost. It's kind of fun to squint your eyes a bit, that way you don't get caught up in the nitty gritty details. Before I kick off the painting, I gently sketch in some pencil lines to mark out details I want to stand out more after a couple of watercolor layers. Things like leaf veins or cactus textures. 
The neat thing about Hyperartica's Art Pads Magic Ink is that it's meant to get covered by paint, so it doesn't show in your final piece. Your painting ends up looking like a cool hand-drawn piece. Quick tip, I always slide a paper under my hand to keep my palm from smudging the paper. Helps keep everything clean. All right, now we're ready to dive into painting. To start, I go for the lighter colors first, then I layer on the darker ones. This way, we dodge those dark shades mixing into lighter ones while painting next to it. I personally love going for a slightly messy approach. It gives the paint some cool, uneven textures, and I leave tiny spots unpainted to create highlights. I use a more watery mix of each color and then drop in a touch of the same color, but with more pigment. This keeps the color from being uniform, making it look like I put down multiple layers of watercolor instead of just one. Don't stress if you go over the edges while painting. We'll define the letter boundaries more precisely when we paint the wood of the sign. Now on to the other elements. I go for the untouched areas. In other words, I paint non-adjacent parts first. When that initial layer dries, I fill in the gaps to avoid that flat, even look. It's a personal thing. You can paint it your way. I just like to work with as few layers as possible, keeping things wet and letting watercolor do its magic. If you're up for it, you can add a few drops of brown to wet the yellow. It gives a nice shadow effect. I keep painting all the untouched areas. The whole idea here is to give each part its own identity by painting each area distinctly. While the yellow dries, I start working on the green areas. My trick is to first paint with watery paint and then add drops of more pigment paint. Feel free to flip the canvas. Remember, comfort is key. I keep going with the other colors, following the same process. For this succulent, I paint with a watery magenta and add a few drops of violet while it's still wet. Don't worry, if it looks strange now, interesting textures will show up once it dries. Once the already painted areas are dry, I fill in the in-between spaces. This also defines the outlines of the elements. To create the sign, I use diluted paint to draw close zigzag lines. I leave small gaps unpainted in between. Later, in the next layers of paint, I fill these gaps. The layering gives a wood-like texture. I let this sign layer dry and continue painting the rest.
I add a second layer to the wooden sign, overlapping the lines. Remember to create those zigzag lines and leave space between them for overlapping layers. Once the sign is dry, we can go back and apply more layers. You can do as many layers as you like. Now I create some light by lifting paint with the brush like a mop. Do this while the paint is still wet. Once this first layer is ready, I add a second layer, adding subtle shadows and enhancing the plant stems a bit.
To define the letter contours a bit, I use my size 3 slash 0 brush. I also add some shadows here and there. The final step is to accentuate some lines with color pencils. Sharpen the pencil really well so you get thin lines. The idea is to add small accents here and there. If you want even stronger lines, you can use graphite pencil too. But go slowly so it doesn't become too prominent. I was almost done with the painting when I realized the sign letters weren't popping as much as I'd like. So I decided to add a shadow on one side using a fine brush. Then I refine the shadows a bit with a pencil. And there you have it the final artwork. As you can see, it was super easy. Just two layers of watercolor and some pencil touches. Now comes the fun part, framing and hanging it up. What did you think of this video? Any particular template you'd like me to paint? Drop your question in the comments and don't forget to check out our website for more inspiration. Let's keep creating.